If you want to continue to follow our adventure, click subscribe. So you don't miss anything, click the bell notification. Oh, Lazarus, subscribers and followers. I've made several videos talking about our struggles of finding water. And every time I do, I get dozens of comments that says, water is not that hard to find. I've been doing this lifestyle for 40 years and I never have problems finding water. Okay, well, you know, then I'm just a complete idiot because I mean, it is a struggle every time we get into a new location to find water. And usually it requires lots of driving and searching and end up going to a spot that you've been for because that's where you finally say, okay, I'm just out of time to look for water. Or it's because a lot of people don't have a problem violating or stretching the law. I'm going to explain our day yesterday searching for water. Now, when we searched for water, I decided to put on the mindset of a couple few things. First of all, before I started this adventure, I watched a video from a fairly popular YouTube video uh, guy and he explained different methods of finding water. And so I've always tried to use that concept of trying to find water with that philosophy. Well, just recently there was another uh, YouTuber, a female YouTuber who described basically the same thing that this is how you go find water. If you want to drive, you can find water, I guess. The other thing is I even tried to keep in the mindset of RV parks. A lot of folks are going to say, well, you can go to an RV park and fill your tanks. So I, I kept that in mind also. So let me describe my day to you trying to find water. So yesterday we decided that we were going to leave our camp spot. We only have 40 gallons between Carolyn and I. That lasts us about seven days. Every seven days we have to leave to go get water. Now, I know if you're an individual that you can use 40 gallons in two weeks. So the math is actually right on. We're right on where we need to be. Now, of course, a lot of people would say, okay, why don't you just get 40 more gallons? That'll last you two weeks. We just don't want to carry that kind of weight, especially with the mileage that you have to drive to find water. We don't want to drive that long with that much weight, tearing up our little four cylinder truck. So as a lot of you know, we fill our five gallon buckets full of water. It, in our opinion, makes it a lot easier to obtain water. Rainwater, if we find a spigot somewhere that we can use, we can just throw it underneath the spigot. We don't have to hook up hoses and fill tanks no or fill bags ride. of water or and anything. No place to hang it's them. just real convenient for us. So we drove to town. It was about eight miles away. There was three city parks there. Well, actually one of them was a fairground. Uh, and we got to the fairground first and we pulled in. And sure enough, it had everything. It had a water spigot and the bathrooms. And the problem was, was there was a big fence around it. Apparently they didn't want anybody in it. Now I know a lot of folks, and I'm being sarcastic, would say, oh, jump the fence. And the reason I'm being sarcastic is because I think there's actually people who would do that and get the water. But I'm you know, kind of a guy that likes to follow the rules and the intent of the rules. If there's a fence with locks, you know, yeah, I'm probably not supposed to be there. Uh, I don't need a sign to tell me to keep out. So the next place we went to was a gas station. Now this is a town of about 10,000 people. It had, I think, six gas stations and like I said, three city parks. So we stopped at the gas station, the first one we saw, and they had a water faucet outside. And we asked the lady if we could fill up our, our buckets here. And she says, uh, boy, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to have to say no. I, I've never had anybody ask me to do that. Uh, the next place we went to was a city park. And when we pulled in, we could see the water meter. There was a water meter almost at the entrance. And I thought, oh, good, they're going to have water. So we drove around the city park. Sure enough, they had bathrooms. Right outside the bathroom was a sign that says this uh, city park is monitored by cameras. Report suspicious activity to 911. Well, to me, that is, if you're doing anything that's in, uh, implied illegal, like stealing water because the city has to pay for the water, otherwise there wouldn't be a, a meter. We decided to go ahead and look at the bathroom, and they did. They had running water sink and toilet. So now the question becomes, what's the intent of the law? Obviously, you can't fill the bucket. You can't put your bucket up underneath the sink because all you can do is get your hands underneath the faucet. So that would apply to me that, okay, we're not following the intent of what they wanted. So we decided not to. Well, we moved on to the next gas station and they didn't have a uh, water faucet at all. So I, you know, I'm beginning to wonder, question the idea that these YouTube videos are correct. Trying to put myself in the mindset of folks that might be coming out here like I did a year and a half ago. 
saying, okay, I'm going to follow the advice of these YouTubers and there's water everywhere. Just go find it. Well, so we drove to town and wow, there was a water spigot. And so we, I, I mean, I just caught it out of the side of my eye. And so I turned up the road and turned and it was locked to the next city park. Sure enough. Now that one did have a water spigot. <laughs> I was very excited and I cautiously approached the water spigot and I pulled the handle. Nothing came out of it. They've already shut it down for the season, if it was ever on. Trying to keep the mindset of the, uh, these folks that have been out here for 40 years and I've never had a problem filling up water. Okay, so I'm going to give up the criteria that I don't want to drive around with eight buckets of water, you know, 320, 400 pounds, whatever it is, in the back of the truck. So I decided to give up on this criteria and I was going to start looking for RV parks. The closest RV park was 40 miles away. So, I mean, this was, this was absolutely pointless. This town had nothing that we could use. So these YouTube videos that keep inspiring us to come out here because water is so easy to find, I, I just don't see how it's easy to find. I mean, you, if you fill your tanks or fill your buckets that far away and you drive and drive and drive, you're not saving any money, which they advocate that this lifestyle saves you a ton of money. It's not saving you money. Because you got oil changes, you got rear end oil change, you got transmission oil changes, you got all of these maintenance costs. Every time you start that engine, you're wearing and tearing down your vehicle. Okay, so we decide, you know what, we're, we're just going to give up on this campground. We'll come back to it later. We're going to go to the next campground, which was 60 miles away. Water was right next to it, and we're going to stay here for a week. So instead of staying two weeks, we're going to stay a week here, and then we're going to fill up. And then we'll go back up to the next campground. So this campground is about six miles away from the water source. It's a gas station. It's just a water spigot sitting right next to the gas pump. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Click like if you like the video. And happy travels.